to that one here too. Okay. Five minutes for everyone to jump on. Once I see something jump on. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're just waiting a few more minutes here just for everyone to kind of get on. So if you could hang tight, that would be fantastic. Hi, Amber. How are you? <laughs> All right, everyone. We're just kind of hanging tight right now, just letting everyone get on. So it should be just a couple more minutes here for uh, before we get this started. So. everyone I think we're gonna get started here um, thank you very much for taking the time here today to uh, to attend uh, my name is Nate Hendrickson I'm with PHS West I am the uh, local uh, ter uh, territory sales representative in the upper Midwest here so today we're gonna be going over uh, our equipment kind of showing you the operations where we are going to be using these in the facilities um, a brief uh, overview of PHS West. Um, we've been around for about 25 years. Um, we actually started off in. Give me one. Um, what does PHS stand for? Well, that's a funny one. Uh, PHS West is actually so. It actually does. PHS does not actually really stand for anything. We uh, when we took the business over in tw about 25 years ago, it was actually. PHS, I don't know exactly what it was before, but we actually just had kind of incorporated it. So it doesn't have a really meaning. We just, we just absorbed it, we took it, and uh, it's been PHS West ever since. So good question. Uh, like I said, uh, just a brief history of PHS West. Uh, we actually uh, we manufacture motorized carts and tugs. Um, we've been around for about 25 years. and. Um, we actually started back in the endoscopy department. So we started looking at the endoscopy carts and we looked at motorizing them for uh, increasing safety, making things more efficient. Um, so therefore we started off there and then a lot of the other departments started looking at those pieces of equipment saying, where can I get one of those? I'm jealous and what can you do for us? So we've now expanded into about nine different departments through the facility. So we do do a, a healthcare, manufacturing, everything from there. So everything is a custom application to you guys. So you guys let us know what you guys are working with and we can help build to help your job more safe and work more efficiently. So today I'm really gonna be going over um, dialysis. Uh, this is our dialysis cart. So many of you, all this equipment might look familiar. Um, if not, um, it, you know, I'll give you some education on it, but um, to go over the cart itself, I like to start off right away. If you notice, the cart right now is turned off. This is a motorized piece of equipment. The beauty of this right now is you can actually push the cart forward and reverse with ease. So I can actually wheel this all the way up or down or back and even sway it. So this is if I'm in any type 
of like tight spaces, it's a lot easier for me to maneuver this, opposed to having forward, reverse, forward, reverse. But let's get into the kind of the big functions of why having a motorized cart. Obviously, um, safety. Uh, we want to keep every employee safe, especially when you're traveling case to case. Um, also, on top of that, we want to increase, uh, you know, help you with efficiency. Efficiency is going to essentially, um, you know, save you from doing two, three trips to the case, to each case. So you're going to be able to take all of your equipment in one trip. We have a question here, so I'm going to pause. Let me. So would they need to be tested? Risk assessment. That is, let me make sure I'm reading this right. Other question, uh, with COVID-19, how would people join and do they need to have test, uh, tested and risk assessment? So are you speaking about like for when people join, like join like a demonstration or, or purchasing a piece of equipment? I guess I'm not following the question. When it comes to like demonstrations and things, that's what we're doing. Okay, yeah, so maybe how I'm taking it, so Right now, like I said, I'm the Upper Midwest Territory sales rep. So generally my role here is to actually travel to facility to facility, and I actually meet uh, everyone face to face. Along with that, with demonstrations, I actually bring the piece of equipment with me. And what we do is we do an on-site demonstration with you guys. So everyone kind of get hands on here. Now due to COVID, um, that is kind of, uh, kind of grounded me here at home base. So we've actually just started doing virtual in-services, virtual demonstrations, still be able to have you guys see the equipment, how it operates, um, and, and to educate you guys on a live basis so you guys can interact with us just like we're doing now. Um, but normally, under normal circumstances, I would actually be in your facility with your group and we'd be going over and doing, you know, showing you how this operates, having you guys get hands-on with it. So if your facility is open to having vendors, we definitely can uh, get myself, if you're in my territory, or get your local rep in your area to your facility so you guys can have this on site. So hopefully that answered your question. Um, I'm, I'm to tell you the truth, I'm just starting to kind of get used to this virtual stuff. Uh, I have three boys at home. Uh, they're uh, five, six, uh, yeah, five, six, almost to be seven and 10. They know a lot more than this than me. So they actually can show dad how to turn on zoom or Skype or whatever all these are teams. Um, so they've been training dad into this. So if I seem a little, uh, it's just because I'm still trying to get used to the virtual world opposed to being in front of you in person. So, um, but yeah, until all that happens, it's, it's all virtual right now. Um, we do have another question here. And I just want to know um, how they buy the equipment is it available. Email or website. And we can yeah, so we can get your information. But um, with purchasing the equipment, um, you actually have an inside. So like I said, I'm an outside uh, rep. We do have our inside sales reps as well in your area. So if you call PHS West, you'll be directed to your inside rep. And what they can do is kind of get all your information of what equipment you have, whether you have Fersinius, Gambro, um, anything like that. And then we're looking at RO, if you have Marcor, you got um, anything like that. They'll take a list of your equipment and then we'll build the order so it fits your exact equipment. So they'd be the ones to actually run you up a quote and a design of what your cart's going to look at. Any other questions? I'm liking this nice, fully interaction thing. So it's, it's great. So I'm not just like, all right, no other questions right now? All right, so we're going to get down to the operations of the motorized cart itself. So I'm going to bring this forward just a little bit. Our control operations is very simple. It's just an on and off key. You turn the cart on. It's going gonna, it's gonna to power on for you. You're going to get some flashing lights. Basically, what it's doing is it's self-diagnosing itself, letting you guys know 
that it's checking everything in here to make sure it's running properly before you're ready to travel. It's going to go solid lights. You're good to go. This is also your battery indicator light. This will let you know how much battery you have in, uh, in the unit itself. Um, if it does get low enough, it will have a series of flashing lights letting you know I need to be charged. Speaking on the battery itself, uh, it's a smart charging, it's a zero memory battery with smart charging feature. So think of it like this, uh, a gas tank and a gas pump. You don't need to drain the gas all the way down to E before refilling it. And it's just like when you're filling up your car, when it hits full, it stops at the pump. That's exactly what the smart charging does. It actually stops when it hits full and it's not going to overcharge your batteries. Typically, you'll get about eight hours of battery life on here. But what I like to suggest and what my amazing marketing group has come up with is a, is a slogan. Um, when it's not in use, give it some juice. So basically what that means is whenever this is not in motion, plug it in. And this is just a standard outlet for anything, so you don't have to have an adapter or a special place for it. This will plug into any standard outlet, and you can plug it in. Even if it's for, hey, I got only, you know, I'm quickly going to run on a break for about 15 minutes. Plug it in. It's again, it's like going to a, uh, it's like going to a gas pump, putting an extra 15 bucks of gas in, giving it a little more juice. And it looks like we got another question here. Okay, and what was the first part of it? Um, was the, the many types of equipment, how many different kinds we have. So we have, uh, uh, PHS West, like I said, we started off in endoscopy, and we kind of spread it out throughout all the other different departments, so like in, through envir environmental services, um, radiology, uh, you, you name a department, we have a piece of equipment for it. Um, so we even actually have motorized tugs that can actually um, pull our pull linen carts and anything like that in a nice big train if we needed to, like two to three carts at a time. Um, so we actually are there to kind of help you guys when you're in motion hauling that heavy piece of equipment. Um, we basically just will look at what you guys are doing. We'll either take an on-site evaluation or what we'll do is um, uh, do it virtually here. And Mike, I want to say hi to you. I just see you jumped on. Um, so we do, we definitely have that. Um, so for handicap purposes though, I mean, when we're looking at it, um, I would have to look into, I haven't seen anything specifically, but if we can get your information, I definitely can look into that more and we can definitely reach out to you. But um, again, you know, if we're not specifically speaking dialysis, uh, we do have a cart or tug, um, depending on what department you're in, and we can look at your application, what you guys are doing on a daily. So um, I know this one here is a little bit more focused on dialysis, just because I got the dialysis cart here um, with your RO cart, and then you got your dialysis machine. Any other questions? Looking good. That number one on there has confused me. Again, I'm, I'm getting used to this virtual world, so... If I see like a one, I'm like, oh, is someone trying to get a hold of me or doing something? So, um, all right, so we just spoke a little bit about the battery. Like, um, so we'll move down. Right when you turn the card on itself, um, there's already, the horn light is already gonna be illuminated for you. So if you want, it, so you'll hear this while you're in, in travel. It's there handy, especially if you're going down, you know, a tight, um, you know, tight spaces, tight hallways, letting people know that, hey, I'm coming. Perf uh, personally, it's my first button I push because I turn it off. And either going forward in reverse, I'm not going to listen to the beeping. It's, to me, I think it's just because it's a little haunting to me. I, I kind of hear it at night. So I, I turn it off. I've heard it way too many times. Um, this is going to be your speed control. So another car analogy here for you guys is if you guys are familiar with a governor, it's going to regulate what top speed is going to be at when you have it at full throttle. If you have this set at full, thr at full speed, you're going to go at full speed when you have your throttle fully engaged. Now, if you want to slow it down and, uh, and while you're traveling and have it at full throttle, you can easily press the down 
button, you can either just press it all the way down, the ladders will, will go down, or you can keep pressing it and it will go up. For this demonstration, just because I consider myself a trained professional with these pieces of equipment, I'm going to keep it at full throttle. And when we travel real quick, I'll show you exactly that even though I have it at full throttle, I'm not going to be traveling full speed. Uh, last couple buttons we got here is our forward and reverse button. So if I want to go reverse, it's going to be illuminated and it's going to come, it's going to come in reverse. If I push it, it's going to turn that little light off. It's going to let me know I'm going to be going into the forward orientation and it's going to go forward. And if you notice I'm letting it go, it stops automatically. That's your brake. You just, whenever you need to stop this, just let go of the cart and you're done. You have a lift up and lift down button. So this is going to be a very handy button for you guys, just because if you get in a tight room, tight procedure room, and you're, all right, you get anywhere, anywhere that you don't want to sit there and do, I kind of call it the Austin Powers, you know, when he's in that tight little hallway trying to go forward, reverse, forward, reverse. I don't want to do that. Um, so what I do is I'll push the up button and what it's going to do, it's going to take this drive wheel, it's going to bring this off the ground. Now if I need to get in that spot, I can literally just push it back, forth, forward, reverse, however, and then I can push down and that drive wheel is going to come back down here for me. Well, it does that, it looks like we got another question. So the horn, it's a beeper. So it is, it is a horn, and here I'll demonstrate that. I just pushed the, the horn button on. Like I said, I like to turn it off right away. But if you can hear this, it's kind of like a truck backing up. You know, when it's coming back to the dock, it's going to let people know that you're coming. Hopefully you can hear this. So that would be your horn. Again, it's your personal preference whether you want to listen to that all the time. If you don't, just easily push the button and it turns off. Any other questions? I'm, hope, I'm guessing you heard that. All right, and uh, last two things on the controls that I'm going to be showing you here is these two levers. These are your, these are your throttle. So whether you're, you're right-handed or left-handed, you can either use this side, and I, right now I have that button pushed off where the light's off when it's going forward. So I'm using right to go forward. I'm using left to go forward. Now, same thing in reverse. I just push the reverse button. I'm using my left hand to go in reverse. I'm using my right hand to go in reverse. So why I showed you that is just because it doesn't matter what side you use to go forward or reverse, it, this button here is going to basically manipulate whatever these th the throttle is going to do in whatever orientation. So if I have it lit up, it's going to go back and reverse, not lit up, it's going to go on forward. So just depend on whatever dominant hand you're using. Last, we have our emergency switch button. So I like to kind of call this the, the, you know, the hip button for myself is just because if I'm going to go into an elevator and, you know, I have so many people watching me right now, I'm getting a little stressed out. I forget to let go of the cart to break it. So let's just say you guys are all watching me go in this elevator and I get a little nervous. Human tendency is to kind of like tense up. So I'm not paying attention and I'm like, oh, I'm backed up against the wall. It's going to hit into me. But now the cart stopped. It didn't drive me any back. It didn't drive me back at all. I walk away. The button is released. But if you can see this, I still have the throttle engaged, and the cart's not moving. So easily, I let go of the throttle, and then I re-engage the throttle, and now I'm moving again. So it's that button right there is the kind of the. I need to stop right away button opposed to if, I, if I'm a little stressed out or I need to just abruptly stop, that's going to be the button to use. So if I'm going forward and I'm like, uh oh, I didn't see the wall, it's going to stop. Same thing in reverse. It's going to go here, stop. Because if you notice, if I just go like this and I 
it has a little bit more of a gradual stop opposed to that abrupt stop. So this is there to help you out in those tight, stressful uh, circumstances. Any questions for me right now on any of the control housing, anything like that? I know we maybe have dove into it a little deeper than we should have, but eh? Yeah. We good on that part? All right, I'm gonna show you with travel. So like I said, I'm a, I'm a trained professional when it comes to these uh, pieces, uh, motorized pieces of equipment. Go like this. Now I have this set at full speed, but I can show you right now, I mean, I'm going really slow. And this is set at full speed. Again, the throttle is just, like, is just like your gas pedal in your car. The further you push down on it, the faster it's gonna go. So if I pull back a little bit faster, the faster I'm gonna go with this. Same thing with going forward. So driving, I would say the biggest thing with this is, is learning to feel the throttle. Um, just because when you are going down a hallway, straight, nice, long hallway, you're going at that about two, two and a half mile an hour full speed on here, uh, and you have a turn coming up, it's just like going down the freeway. You're at 65 miles an hour, you see a sign that comes up and says, hey, 35 mile an hour curve coming up. You don't fully stop your car to help adjust to go around the curve. What you do is you actually adjust and you, you back off on your on the gas and then just down to 35, that's exactly what you're gonna do with your throttle as well. Because if you take that, that corner at full speed, it is gonna have a feel of a little bit of a G-force kind of bringing you. So that's where getting to learn the throttle a little bit in here. Now when we're talking about equipment, again, it's basically what you guys have. Let's just say, be it a Braun, be it a for Cineas, be it a Gambro, we all we do have the bases that we actually sell here that we'll be able to retrofit onto your dialysis equipment, and then we would put all of your RO onto the motorized cart itself. Now the nice thing about this cart here is it actually will it, it saves space as well. So when you are in those you know those procedure rooms, those cases, you can actually take this, and if you can see my foot. With just a press of a foot, there's a little black button here. Black uh, press on there. This actually will detach, and now you have a smaller footprint. So what I generally do is the first thing I'll do is our hitch does stick out a little a little bit. So if you can see, kind of a little darker background, hitch sticks out. You can easily flick this up. Now you can easily just kind of you have an easy passage. You don't have something that's gonna kind of nick you a little bit. So you have your air, and then let's just say I need to move this. I can lift up our drive wheel, and now I can place this cart wherever I need to in the room to do my case. So it's got a smaller footprint, um, especially if you're kind of in tight quarters. Now when it comes to hooking it up, what I'll do is I'll push that button down. I'll bring down the drive wheel again, just because when I hook, when I hitch this up, I don't want this moving back and forth on me. When that drive wheel is down, you can't go forward in reverse. I mean, you can dance around with it all all day long. I mean, you know, feel like you've missed the prom. You just want to dance in the hallway. You can do that all day long with this cart. What I'll do is I'll take this. I'll just show you an example. Let's just say I just took away the Persinius, and I got a Gambro here. I can now bring this. Now, if you remember, the Persinius had the hitch. I put I put the hitch up in the uh, upward up orientation. I can now flick it down with my foot. And what I like to hear is two clicks. Two clicks is going to let me know this is fully engaged. So if you can hear it, there's one. There's two. Now it's all one cart. Now at this point, I'm ready to travel, and off I go.
And when it comes to travel, I did want to kind of highlight this a little bit, is I'm 6'2", I'd say more in the morning, 6'1"-ish toward the afternoon after eating a nice hearty meal, letting it kind of you know bring me down a little bit. So I'm 6'2". I still have a blocked view of where I'm going, so I kind of have to do what I call, again, a kind of another movie reference here, uh, Ace Ventura. You know, when at the end he's chewing his gum and he's hanging his head out the window. So I really don't want to do that. I still have to kind of look around and see who might be passing in front of me or if there's any, any, anything in the front that I could potentially hit. So I don't want to do that. How I like to prefer, how I like to travel is I actually put the cart in reverse. I stand nice and tall, right beside, the, right behind, beside your, your handle, not in front of it because I'm going to feel like my, I'm going to want to pull this thing, not behind it because I'm going to kind of want to do this. Nice and tall, hand on the controller, and now think of it like this. I've had a, a dog for 10 years. This is my dog. We've went on a walk every day. So this dog knows my walk, I know its walk. And what I'm gonna do is stand nice and tall, we're in reverse, and now I'm able to travel and walk, having that plain view of sight in front of me, so I know I'm not gonna be able to be hitting anything or running into anything. Any questions from, from the standpoint of this motorized dialysis cart um, or any questions on the equipment that you have that you might think uh, that I didn't cover? Nothing yet. And like I said, we, I, you know, for everyone who is watching, if you're familiar with dialysis carts or you're in dialysis, this is, you know, we definitely can go and look at your orientation as well through your inside representative here at PHS West. Um, but for people who are maybe outside or, or think, oh, you know what, um, uh, my EVS or my endoscopy or something might need something like this because they're traveling a lot. We obviously want to reduce, we want to, uh, increase safety, we want to be more efficient because we've been watching these people take multiple trips on one case, you know, two, three times back and forth, these long, long hallways. Um, that's where our equipment is going to come in is because, again, it's going to be able to haul everything that you need to do to perform your job and do it safely. Uh, and then also, you're going to have a, you're going to have customers, you're, you're going to have their, uh, uh, your employee satisfaction. They're going to be, you know, head over heels when they find out when they get home, they've been pushing these carts all day long in the past, but when they got your motorized piece of equipment, they might sit down and say, you know, I don't need to sit back and lounge back on this couch and just go, Ugh. They might, I might go outside, I might go do more lawn work, I might go play with my kids a little bit more. So it does have the energy saver, so then you're going to have your uh, very happy employees as well. So, um, If you need to contact us, please feel free. Um, I'm, there's a link on here, right? Again, I'm uh, virtual. It's uh, this, uh, so uh, you can contact us. Again, it will direct you to your right representative um, to help you design based off of your needs, what your equipment is, um, and, and ask any further questions that maybe you couldn't think of right now, but um, you remember it later. So. And there we go, we got the PHS West link right there for you to click on. All right guys, so I'm gonna just hang out here to see if anything pops up, if any uh, people wanna you know, feel any questions for me, I'll, I'll be here for a couple more minutes, but I wanna again say thank you guys very much for attending. Please feel free to reach out to us with any other questions that you may not have thought of now during this demonstration, but um, you know, we're, we're here for you guys and I hope you guys have a lovely weekend.
All right, guys. Thank you. Have a great weekend.